It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday, and I like to change it up on you guys a little bit. I've got Professor Greg Cosell here on a Wisdom Wednesday because you can always check out Andrew Brandt on his excellent Business of Sports podcast any week he's not on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast and because I've got a special guest coming on Friday that I'm very excited about. Thankfully, Greg was able to do Wednesday, which is why one of the reasons why Greg's the man. He's also the man, if you read uh, Peter King's column this week, it was Greg Cosell's column. Led Zeppelin? I had no idea. Can't wait to talk to Greg momentarily. We are presented by DraftKings, of course. Thank goodness for them. Thank goodness for all of you. The winners, the people I'm going to talk about on Friday, the people that spread the word via social media, easiest contest I'm aware of, at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod. In any social media platform, I check them all. The sponsor confirmation email winner. That's the people that take advantage of one of the codes we have for you for one of our sponsors. Somebody, one of our patrons, patreon.com slash RT Media said, Ross, you should have a place where all of the codes are listed. They are on the on the sponsors tab at rostucker.com. It, it, there's either the code is listed and it tells you what you get, or you just click the link and you automatically get it because it's like a specific URL. But just go to rawsucker.com and click on the sponsors tab. Uh, YouTube shout out. Love that. Love the YouTube subscribers and love giving you guys cameo style shout outs for free. If you're familiar with the cameo app, a lot of you from time to time have me give you video shout outs there and you pay for it. You can get it for free. Just subscribe on YouTube and comment and you'll get one of those cameo style shout outs, which are awesome but not quite as awesome as Greg Cosell. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Well, Greg, look, I always love talking with you, (laughs) but especially fresh (laughs) off of, I'm glad we're doing it earlier this week because the shine is still on you, Greg, from your outstanding column for Peter King on Monday. I didn't know you were doing that. What a cool thing for me to read. Yeah, you know, I don't know how Peter does that every Sunday night because I think I wrote 6,000 words, give or take. And, Ross, you know, that's a lot of words. And it probably took me three, four sittings to do that. I couldn't bang out 6,000 words in one sitting. Yeah, he that, he doesn't do it in one sitting either. Ah, he, well, I, know. I, I know. I mean, I've talked to him. He, he does a good job of – Making it seem like it's all done in one sitting? <laughs> well, the stuff he can write ahead of time, he right. writes ahead of time. Sure. It's toughest during the season when most of the stuff has to be Sunday night stuff, but he's writing throughout the day. I'm sure. The stuff that happens at 1 and 4 that he can start to write about. But well, I was had- with him. I mean, I was with him on a training camp tour once, and it's no joke that he's up till 3 or 3 a.m., on Sunday night. I mean, that, that, that is legit. Yeah. Well, it's funny because, uh, you know, I, I, he asked me a number of months ago and I took it very, very seriously because I know a lot of people look at that column and, you know, I think a lot of people think I'm just a guy that sits and watches tape all day, which maybe I do, you know, now that come to think of it, that's probably what I do, but I just thought it was important to personalize it a little bit, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I know you sit and watch tape all day. I already know that. But what I didn't know is like the Led Zeppelin white snake stuff. Craig. <laughs> I had no idea, man. I, I I guess I never really thought about what you listen to while you well, now are you a guy that listens to music while you're watching tape or do you need silence? No. I I go back and forth. It depends on my mood. But, you know, normally I listen to music. Now, I'll run the gamut of what I listen to. I don't listen to the same thing all the time. But at my core, and and Ross, that's because I'm a little older than you. See, you know, at my core, I'm a a 70s, you know, classic rocker. So um, that's the music I always come back to when I really feel the need to get back into the groove. I I, I love it. Um, You know, it's interesting because... I definitely 
can't have the TV on. Oh, me neither. I'm working. So, like, I can't have someone talking or anything like that. I haven't tried a lot of music. Maybe I could try light music. But I have always, I always just work in silence. I definitely can't have someone commenting because then I'll be looking up at it and like that would that would not be good. I agree with that. No, TV but, doesn't work. I can't. But maybe I could try some light music. Maybe I'll try some light music and see how that does. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. All right. Speaking of awesome, uh, we're going to get to the AFC North and fascinating division. I've got so many questions to ask you about that. I did want to ask you, Demarius Thomas retired this week as yep. a member of the Denver Broncos. And, you know, look, you're like a, a football historian at this point. Um, I always like to just get your thoughts. Like, I think we all, everybody listening to this show or watching on YouTube remembers Demarius Thomas. How will you remember him moving forward? Because I do think when a guy has an outstanding career – we should we, we should at least get one sentence from Greg Cosell. <laughs> I mean, he had that really strong stretch when uh, Peyton Manning was the quarterback in Denver, and that's when Demarius Thomas pretty much came into his own. I think he had five consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, caught, if memory serves me correctly, 90 or more balls in each of those seasons. Um, you know, a big physical wideout, um, not a true vertical receiver, but could do that. Um, just a, a really solid NFL receiver playing in a really good system with a high-level quarterback. And, you know, I think the size, it, it's probably his size that would really stand out to me. He he played like a big man. Um, and everybody, of course, remembers, too, the Tebow uh, touchdown in the playoff game in overtime um, that he hit him on the slant. He went about 80 yards for a touchdown. Uh, so that's a that's a, an iconic play in NFL recent history. But just a, just a really good NFL receiver who, as I said, it's his size that probably stands out to me more than anything. Yeah, I think it's so interesting given their – what offense they ran for so long that like Calvin Johnson and Demarius Thomas both came from Georgia Tech. Yep. That kind of cracks me up a little bit. All right, so we got that. Now let's get to the AFC North. I mean, I got a lot to ask you about all these teams. Let's start, though – with the Baltimore Ravens and your thoughts on where the Ravens are going into the 2021 season. Yeah, I think the Ravens are a fascinating team because uh, we know about their run game. We know that it's the most diverse and difficult to defend in the league because of Lamar Jackson. Uh, it's, it's an offense that is essentially built on the quarterback uh, as a runner. That's the foundation of the offense. So the question is, how can they advance that? I actually watched all of Lamar Jackson's third and six plus throws earlier this week. And there were some struggles there. And I, that's where they need to improve. They need to improve in defined passing situations. And I think when you when you watch Lamar, you see a quarterback that needs to improve in the details of pocket play. What the tape showed. And again, I think I can't remember the number of plays of third and six plus, but there were well over 100. He needs to to improve in the, in the nuances. He has a tendency to drift when he drops back in the gun. He moves off the midline. And when you drift, instead of dropping straight back, you create your own pressure. He also has a tendency to climb the pocket unnecessarily. So it creates pressure of your own making and you end up losing the rhythm and structure of the pass game, and you leave throws on the field. Now, we know he can compensate at times with his great legs, Ross, but ultimately you have to be able to make throws on third down within the structure of your offense. And that's the area I'm sure they're working on this offseason, and that's the area they must improve because you it's just not enough, as, as remarkably spectacular as Lamar Jackson is, for them just to be a running team. Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of answered this, Greg. Watching them the last couple of years, I guess, and I think Lamar Jackson's fantastic. So fun to watch. I guess I have a tough time, Greg, picturing him throwing the ball consistently well enough 
to win four playoff games in a row against playoff caliber opponents and and ho- hoist that trophy. I just I don't see it. I and maybe he can improve. We talked last week about how much Josh Allen has improved. Maybe Lamar can improve, but you know, when you're playing good teams, they're going to do a good job of slowing down the run game. You might get behind. You're going to have to make those throws, and I just don't know that he can consistently do it in a four-game stretch against good teams like that. And that's the challenge, Ross. I mean, watching all those third and six-plus plays, uh, the tape showed me that there was very much a random feel to his game. There's a lot of unnecessary movement, which at times, of course, results in outstanding improvisational plays, but more often led to missed opportunities in the passing game. And that's the challenge. Uh, And I guarantee that Jim Harbaugh, uh, John Harbaugh, Greg Roman, James Urban, I guarantee they're aware of this. I know they wanted to work on it last offseason. They could not because of the pandemic. This seems to be a more normal offseason. I guarantee that they're working on that. Um, That's where they need to get to in order for, for them to do just what you said. Uh, let's move on. Anything of note on the Ravens defensively? Uh, I mean, they're a good defense. Obviously, they lost some people. Um, they lost Matthew Judon, who's a very, very good player. Um, I think they feel that Tyus Bowser can step in and fill that role. He's a draft pick from 2017. Really athletic. They've kind of developed him slowly over time. I think they feel he'll be that guy. Um, they're still very solid um, at the corner position. So, uh, well, you know, I think it'll be a a really good defense. It's really well schemed. They have a lot of difficult pressure schemes that that offenses struggle with. So, you know, I I think the big question and is is what happens with their pass game as they go forward. Obviously, they've they've uh, they drafted Rashad Bateman. They signed Sammy Watkins. They're bringing in receivers. That's all well and good, but those receivers need to be part of a well-schemed, well-designed pass game that functions effectively and consistently. Greg, let's get to the Cincinnati Bengals. Man, I mean, Greg, they got a pretty good-looking young skill group core. I they mean, sure do. Uh, I, I mean, Mixon, Boyd, Higgins, now Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow at quarterback. I guess I just wonder if they can build a team up enough around those guys to really do something here. Yeah, and and I watched a lot of Burrow this offseason as well. He's 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 a fun guy to watch because he's he's really refined. He's really comfortable. Um, he sees it. He knows where to go with the football. Um, he's got a natural feel for timing and ball placement. Um, a, a phrase I heard a coach tell me, which which you see with Burrow, is he's got rhythm in his body. He's got light feet. Um, and you're right about the skill position players. The big question is the O line. Because one thing that really stood out watching their third down plays last year, Ross, is how often they kept on third down now. We're not talking about shot plays on first down. We're talking about third down. They kept a tight end and a back end to pass protect. Not just to chip, but to pass protect. So that means you're only sending three receivers into routes. And that's a problem. Because if the defense does not blitz... You're ending up with three receivers against seven defensive, you know, seven coverage players. And that that's not a good number situation because the NFL is a numbers game uh, and that's not a good situation. And their O-line, everybody knows about their O-line. It needs to be better. Um, I think that Jonah Williams at left tackle needs meaningful improvement in his one on one pass protection. Um, Obviously, they brought in Riley Reef. He'll play right tackle. Um, but they need to be better in pass protection with their O-line group so that they can do more conceptually in their pass game. Defensively for the Bengals? Yeah, that, you know, that's another area that there's concerns. I mean, there's definitely concerns at the corner position. They brought in a woozy from the uh, um, Cowboys. Um, their corner position is is – Definitely a question mark. It's it's a work in progress. We don't know what it's going to look like. Um, they brought in Trey Hedrickson. I think they hope he can be that one-on-one individual pass rusher that can create pressure. 
They've got some young linebackers. They played with two rookie linebackers meaningfully last year in Akeem Davis-Gaither and Logan Wilson. They're counting on them to improve. They're both athletic players. So I, I think the defense is a bit of a question. Um, as good as their offense could be, you still don't want to put Joe Burrow in a situation where by choice he has to drop back 40 times a game just so he could put up 30 every week. That would be a tough situation given that their offensive line uh, is at this point in time is an issue. Let's move on to the Cleveland Browns. Um, another really interesting team going in this year. I guess my question for you, Greg, are you, are you, are you convinced about Baker Mayfield now? Like, are, do, are you confident that Baker Mayfield is a Super Bowl caliber a uh, franchise quarterback for years to come, or was it more Stefanski's offense putting him in a good position? Where are you at with Baker? Well, my question to you would be, what's the problem with the second point? Every quarterback is a system quarterback. Every team runs a system. Stefanski's system is a very good system. Uh, it's based off the run game. It's play action. I think Baker is ideally suited for that style of offense. Um, if you're asking me if he's Tom Brady, he's not Tom Brady. No one is. But he can run this offense efficiently and effectively. They've got two outstanding backs. If Beckham is back healthy, they, they're solid at the wide receiver position. They're very, very deep at tight end. They can play a lot with two tight ends, with three tight ends, and create a lot of different formation looks with their tight ends because they're athletic. Harrison Bryant and Joku, even Austin Hooper, they can detach from the formation. They can do a lot offensively. They've got a really good O-line. You could argue Wyatt Teller last year, and I know he missed three or four games. He was as good a guard as there was in the league for a good stretch of the season. They're really solid. This is a really well-schemed offense that can attack defenses in multiple ways with different personnel packages, multiple formations. They can play fast. They can play slow. Um, I think Baker can run this offense efficiently and effectively. What about the Browns on defense where they made a bunch of additions this offseason, both in the draft and free agency? Yeah, I think they, they really added a lot um, to um, their secondary. I think that John Johnson coming in at safety is a really strong addition. They really are counting on Grant Delpit, who missed all of last season, to be an important player. He's a long athletic safety. Um, Johnson and Delpit could end up being a really solid safety duo. Um they're solid at corner. I guess they anticipate Greg Newsom being good enough to start. We'll see. They also draft, drafted Greedy Williams in the second round in 2019. He's a very talented kid who's just been injured a lot. So they've got a lot of bodies in the secondary that we'll see how it all works out. We know about Miles Garrett. Um, they signed Clowney. You know, Clowney's not a pass rusher. He's a run defender. Um, but so we'll see how they choose to use him. Um, but you know, they've got some solid players up front. Their linebacking core is, I don't want to say it's a question. I don't know if they have that dominant, super athletic linebacker. They signed Anthony Walker from Indianapolis. He's a, he's a really good kind of base defense linebacker. That's what he is. And you need those guys. But he's not really a sub-package player. Um, now, they're going to find out, I guess, about Owusu Koromoa, who they were thrilled to get in the second round. In an ideal world, he becomes a sub-package player with his explosive athleticism. Yeah, that's a really good point. Walker could be the base guy. Uh, Owusu Koromoa could be a sub guy, maybe certainly to start off. What about last but certainly not least, Greg? I mean, another really interesting team, the Pittsburgh Steelers and what appears to be Big Ben's last year, we think, and he's doing it with a new offensive coordinator and really a new offensive line. I know. Well, that's going to be interesting because, you know, the old line right now um, is, you know, everybody's going to say it's no good. We don't know that it's no good. It, it's it's a work in progress and we don't know where it'll end up. That's the point. Um, I would think, and none of us know this, but I would think that with the uh, addition of Najee Harris as the first round pick, with the addition of Pat Fryermuth as a second round pick when they already have Eric Ebron, that you could well see 
a, a change in their overall offensive approach. You just can't cannot ask Ben Roethlisberger at this point in his career behind this totally unproven offensive line. Um, and they did draft two guys in the third and fourth round who I both like their tape a lot, but they're rookies. We don't know. But you just cannot ask Roethlisberger to drop back 40, 45 times by choice. They did that a lot last year. I mean, you don't draft Najee Harris, in my opinion, Ross. I, I, I would think you would agree that you don't draft him to give him the ball nine times a game. He's not that kind of back. He's a foundation feature back. He's a grinder. He wears people out. He's 230 pounds. I've actually met him, and he is a big dude. And you, you, want, you draft him to give him the football. So I would think that the foundation of this offense will change. What about the Steelers on the defensive side of the ball? They're still really good. Um, you know, obviously they, they lost uh, Bud Dupree, but I think they feel really good about um, Highsmith, Alex Highsmith, who played meaningful snaps a year ago, um, and he, he'll replace Dupree, barring anything unforeseen. Um, they're really good in the secondary. Um, you know, I think one area, the corner position opposite Hayden is probably a training camp battle. They've got a kid from Michigan State, Justin Lane, who was a third-round pick a few years ago. I, I think he's had some off-the-field issues, so I don't know where he stands there. But, you know, he's a long, pretty athletic kid. I'm sure they'd love for him to win that job, but we don't know the answer to that. Um, but they'll be good on defense. I mean, they got a lot of good players on defense. I mean, they got Fitzpatrick. They got Watt. They got Haywood. They got Tewitt. Um, Bush will be back. Uh, they've got a lot of quality players on the defensive side of the ball. Greg, fantastic stuff. I'll let you go back to watching tape and listening to Zeppelin. <laughs> like, do you like rock out? Like, do you like crank the music up and like headbang while you're doing it? Ah, uh, you can't quite do that. You know, you can't make it super loud because then it just, you know, gets in your brain too much. But you know, yeah, silence sometimes doesn't work for me when I'm watching. It all depends on the day. I got to figure out what I'm going to watch now. I haven't decided that yet. What I'm going to listen to, I haven't decided that yet today. Ross. Ooh, I love it. Thank you, Greg. All right, Ross, thanks. Check Greg out on social media, at Greg Cosell, so you know all the stuff he's doing. I'll tell you one thing we're doing that I know you guys are going to love. Talking about it more on today's Fantasy Feast podcast, but we're doing a best ball draft. Best ball fantasy draft. We'll be doing one in July, early July, one in early August. I want you guys in. I want to go head-to-head. -head. Look, I don't, I don't do this – just for, for the heck of it, for my good looks, right? Like, I, I like to win. We're doing these DraftKings best ball drafts. All you have to do is really any of the things I talk about on the show, but in particular, take advantage of any of our sponsors, like Raycon earbuds or Keeps for your hair, like I do all the time, and then just send me that email, ross at rosstucker.com, and say, Ross, I won in the best ball draft. And certainly, if you're the type of person that takes advantage of multiple sponsors, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to get in the best ball draft. Talk some junk, talk some trash against me and Joe, and let's see what you got. Tux Takes. Hi, Ross. A few items to get to. Let's start with the Atlanta Falcons. Rookie Kyle Pitt signing his contract is going to give him the most guaranteed money for any tight end in NFL history. Isn't that amazing? I mean, like, we all think he'll be good, but he might not. He might not be good. And already, boom, he's got the most guaranteed money because it's the fourth overall pick, it's slotted, and the whole contract's fully guaranteed. Whereas these other guys, I saw um, Greg Olson was kind of complaining about it recently, but these other guys aren't getting that type of guaranteed money. I think Kittle's implied guarantees are like $40 million or over time it's $40 million, but not at signing. Nobody as much as Kyle Pitts. That, that says something to you right there, where a rookie can sign a contract that, makes, that gives him the most guaranteed money for his position ever. Something's not right there. Tux Takes. The Washington football team named team owner Tanya Snyder, the wife of Daniel Snyder as co-CEO. You know, I don't know if this ever happened before, Bri. I really don't know what to say about that. Like, okay. Back to you, Bri. All right. Tux takes. 
for the second year in a row, no supplemental draft this season. I mean, is there more I should say about Daniel Snyder's wife being the co-CEO? I mean, I'm sure there's some reason for that. I'm sure there's some logic behind it. I don't know. I saw where Florio from Pro Football Talk had some speculation about different things, and I, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, not only do I not know, I don't think many of you care at all. So I'm going to stop talking about it. I also don't think many of you care that there's no supplemental draft. I, I don't know why they did this again. I guess they're worried that there'd be a big influx potentially i i don't know i mean last year they didn't have a supplemental draft because they were worried a lot of guys would enter it because of covid i don't really know why they're not having one this year you know those guys would have gone pro if they could i guess the fact that they all they all get that extra year of eligibility maybe maybe they just don't think anybody will do it i, I don't know Tough takes and finally, let's talk about Demarius Thomas. You mentioned it earlier with Greg. He retires as a member of the Denver Broncos. And also, John Facenda won the Pete Rozelle TV Radio Award from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So, yeah, I don't really have anything to say about Demarius Thomas. Outstanding career. Congratulations, Demarius. I already asked Greg about him. As for John Facenda, this was long overdue. Uh, John has passed, so this he's, he's getting this award posthumously um, but John Facenda you go back everything on NFL films from like the 50s through I don't know the 90s maybe that is John Facenda's voice and it's indelibly marked in all of our brains you know there aren't many people or many things in life where your legacy is like that memorable to people that long after you pass. But John Facenda talking about the autumn wind is a raider. I mean, it's just that guy pillaging. I mean, like his voice, those NFL films, simply incredible. Um, Well-deserved. I'm glad he got that. I'm also glad you guys have the chance to download the DraftKings Casino app now and use promo code ROSS to get a shot at a share of $5 million in total prizes. Last week was the first week I even ever told you about the DraftKings Casino app. They got this DraftKings Casino Legend series. I'm really into these Legend series, by the way. They got these series where you can, like, you enter and you can win millions. Of, I think the NFL, it's like a million bucks each week they're giving away, which is just insane. It's promo code Ross to earn a shot at a share of $5 million in total prizes only on DraftKings Casino. Let's get to an email, Brian. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, here's your chance. It's time to ask Ross. The email address is always for any purpose, especially sponsor confirmations, ross at rosstucker.com. And I know a lot of you know this, but if you take advantage of any of our sponsors or even just rate and review the show and send it to me, not only will you be entered to be the winner that week and get one of these press passes I have left over or a signed picture or card, but also you're going to get a chance to get your question answered on the show. You'll hear your name on the show. I'll answer it. What do you got, Brian? Uh, today's question from Alan Rumney, who used the 1-800-Flowers, uh, used the code football. This is ahead of uh, Mother's Day. So he sent in a question. Hey, Ross, as an Eagles fan, I respect the draft that Philly had in going back to start building again. With three potential picks in the first round next year, there's a lot they can do. Now, if they don't perform well this year, I will imagine the topic of conversation will be on trying to trade for Rodgers, Wilson, Watson, whatever. Uh, if the season is moderate to good and they opt to move forward with Hertz, where do you see them trying to spend those first three rounders? Um, first, I'm sorry, those three first rounders. This year was clearly a best available foundation draft, but next year could easily become a needs draft. It's a good question, Alan. Um, you know, a lot of that, obviously, Alan, would depend on how this year goes, right? Like, let's see how 
how much Fletcher Cox still has in the tank. Let's see how the right side of the offensive line does. I mean, a, a lot of that is sort of uh, TBD. Off the top of my head, if it's not quarterback, certainly it feels like one of them would be a defensive back. I think given Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham's age, one of them would probably be a defensive lineman in some capacity. And then with Jason Kelsey and Brandon Brooks and Lane Johnson's injuries recently, um, I would think one's offensive line. So if they don't need a quarterback, if Hertz is good, then that would be my guess. Actually, I think they would probably trade one of those to uh, to get another first round pick the year after that. So it's two and two rather than three this next year. But those are the guys I think that 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 you would see those those three I just mentioned, um, O line, D line, and secondary would be my guess. Good question. Keep them coming. Love the questions. Love going against you guys in fantasy drafts. Absolutely cannot wait to see who we get to go against in this DraftKings best ball draft. Shout outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com. I thought Kiev from Odds Breakers was fantastic on the Even Money podcast yesterday. I think you'll be very interested to hear who the math says, which teams overachieved and underachieved last year. Well, even if you're not into betting at all, you'll want to hear that what the math says on that. And, of course, we'll have Michael Beller from The Athletic joining Joe and I on today's Fantasy Feast. Other than that, special guest Friday. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.